If you are a UI UX designer and you still don't have portfolio, then let's fix that. Today I'm breaking down how to build UI UX portfolio that isn't just pretty, it's strategic. Stick around till the end because I will show you how to generate portfolio using AI under 10 minutes. So let's start which format we should use, PDF or website, and where we should use them. So of course website is easier to share, you can make it more personal, more in your style, showcase truly your design skills. But the website needs the maintenance and it could be overwhelming if this is your first portfolio you're gonna make. With the PDF, it's more for a control presentation, it's better for offline interviews and can be more tailored to a specific project. But it's not really interactive and we have limited space. So my advice, build both. Start with the PDF. Firstly, if you apply on a LinkedIn, it's very likely they're gonna ask you to upload PDF instead of link to website. So you need to be prepared for that as well. Secondly, once you gather your thoughts and focus which project you wanna focus on, what you wanna write about yourself, how you wanna structure your portfolio, it's gonna be much easier to transform from PDF to website itself. Let's now go to common portfolio mistakes. So mistake number one is too many projects. The golden rule, I would say, pick between three to five of your strongest projects. The best case scenario, you want to pick your most relevant, the most recent and the most remarkable projects. So with the relevant, you want to pick something that is relevant to the job you're applying for. With the remarkable, you just want to show off yourself. Like if you can make this shiny button with 3D design and then hover effect with sprinkle, show it. And the last one is recent. I would say it was maximum done in the past two to three years. Moving on to mistake number two is no storytelling, just images. It isn't Behance or Dribble when we just put the images on and we hope that someone's gonna like them. So you wanna briefly explain each stage of the project. What was your role? Were you like just solo designer or were part of the team? Which year was the project? Then what was the challenge? So for example, the challenge could be to simplify onboarding process and improve sign up success rate. Then you want to talk about your process. How did you approach the challenges set in the beginning? Was there anything hard or unclear? Did you perform any research, any user testing? You don't want to write long paragraphs, just briefly describe each stage of the project. Have you done low few volume frames? Include them. If there was a research, include what kind of research was it? Some screenshots of it. So then they're gonna know that you are able to perform research in their company. Moving on to the mistake number three. If you decide to go for a website, please make sure it's mobile friendly. <laughs> that the image is loading fast, the website's loading fast. For the images, I highly recommend going into tiny pics or similar when you reduce the size of the image. And don't forget to add like contact forms, your contact information, links to LinkedIn or button to contact uh, so it's all on the one page and recruiter don't have to go back to their email to find out information about you. So now we know what we don't want to do, let's move on into what we want to do in the portfolio. Many designers say that they are their own toughest clients, especially when it comes to portfolio. And I've been there so many times redesigning my portfolio over and over and over again and I've never been happy about it. But it's understandable because it has your name on it, so you want to represent the best version of yourself. But it's very useful to keep in mind who is the end user of your portfolio. It's not you, it's the recruiter or the person who want to hire you. You might be limited with time and you need to have a portfolio on next week. And you would rather focus all your energy to polishing the case study than learning a new tool to publish your website. And here comes the today partner of this video, which is Gamma App. And let me tell you, if you have nothing ready, no sketch, nothing. You just have a word, I need to finish my portfolio and you know your name and when you're based and how many projects you potentially could have. Gamma AI gonna structure everything for you, including the copy. It is an AI powered platform that helps you create pitch decks, presentation documents and more by using AI tech generation as well as content and image generation. All done in minutes with zero experience. It's sort of like Canva and Notion, but on steroids. So with Gamma, we're gonna create a portfolio presentation, just a lot of quicker than I ever was with the power of AI. We can start by going to the inspiration tab when you see what other people have created, as well as some starter ideas. 
They also have some ready templates, for example, this personal portfolio that could be handy in this project. So let's go ahead and create our presentation. And you can see it gives me a three different option of how we can start. The one we're gonna use today is the generate from one line of prompt in seconds. Uh, you can as well import your file, like existing docs presentation or web pages, as well as create just some notes and outline of existing contents. So for starters, we're just gonna go and hit generate from the prompt. We can select if we want this to be a presentation, web page, document or social post. I'm gonna go with the presentation and then we can describe how many cards we want. I'm gonna choose 10 cards. We can select then the page style. Let's go with the traditional look and the language. I'm gonna stick with English. We have some example prompts below, which we can shuffle to have more ideas what Gamma is capable of. So let's go ahead and describe that we want to make a portfolio for UI UX designer with free case studies. And then we're gonna hit generate outline. And very quickly, you can see it gives me the option of the different slides, generally summarizing what I would like to have in my deck, but maybe I want it to, in different order or change what I'm talking about, like here predefine our case study, which we're of course gonna add our own current study inside. I think we're gonna definitely move the about me a bit lower. And I think that card, the design process and methodology is not really needed in our scenario. So let's stick with nine cards. Maybe we're gonna add a bit more into case studies later on. And now we have a really nice structure. So if you don't know what you need to prepare for your case study, this is a good place to start. So you need the problem, the user research, key challenge, design approach, and the outcome. Next, we can customize how our presentation will look like. So I'm gonna go and hit view more. You got lots of themes to choose from, whether you want a professional, colorful, more dark or more light. I'm gonna go and choose this Velvet Tides theme because it's not gonna clash with my project. I know I haven't used those colors anywhere, so this is a safe choice. I'm gonna select the theme. We can then decide amount of text per card, if you want brief, medium or detailed. I think the brief because we're gonna add our own text and the image source, we can also use AI to generate images, but because it's our portfolio, we're gonna add our own images. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just select image placeholders. In the advanced mode, we can as well describe who we're writing for. So that's gonna be hiring managers. And we wanna sound mm, professional, technical, I would say professional, but casual. And let's continue with our presentation. As you can see, it created an entire presentation in like 30 seconds. We can of course customize this theme even more. All we have to do is click the edit theme and then the theme we selected, go hit customize. We can change our primary colors, our text colors, as well as the background. I do not want any background. And now we have to slightly adjust the colors. We can change our fonts. I think I'm gonna go with the sans font so maybe dm sans we can change of course our letter spacing upload our logo if we have one and then adjust even more design so i'm gonna go for rounded corners slight shadow minimal border and the classic image shape so this is all what gamma generated for us we're gonna slightly adjust that to match our portfolio structure so if we want to change the layout of the card all we have to do is uh, change the card styling could be no layout, could be top, left, right, or uh, background image. For the first card, I think I'm gonna go with uh, no layout at all. If you wanted to add new card or new block, everything is on the right side panel. So we can search for blocks which one we like. This is really handy if you're creating a pitch or sales deck. But what I like about this demo is that you can drag your prototypes directly from Figma or Miro into the presentation. We can also add a gallery or even a video with your interactive prototype, as well as buttons and forms. So now let's adjust it to make it look more like actual portfolio. You want to simply say who you are, what you do and where you're based. You may want to add a photograph of yourself or no, it's totally up to you. Let's start with some catchy headline. We could use AI to re rephrase or write the text for us, but I think we're just gonna start with the I design digital experiences. Then I'm gonna insert the uh, three columns and we're gonna add a little bit info about ourselves. So we are a UX designer, our name and surname, and let's make that one much bigger, like display. Then below the hero section, you wanna showcase your best three case studies. 
one from real client, one could be passion project and one could be UX challenge. I recommend either using the layout when we have picture on the one side and then title and subtitle horizontally, or we're gonna stack them in one row with image and then text below. Don't make it over complicated, just keep it simple. So I'm gonna choose the card from template and I'm gonna use the free image columns. It's the same as with Netflix. You open it and then you decide where you wanna click or whether you wanna click anything at all. So you wanna make sure they look very clickable. It's not just the image or just the text. If you don't have free projects, then we're gonna go a little bit creative. We can create a passion project, which is gonna show more initiative. It can be way more creative. It could be a completely out of blue project where you come up with the idea and you design for it. Could be redesign of the existing stuff, for example, Spotify for dog owners. Or you can ask your friends to give you some idea and they could be your client. And lastly, there is loads of UX challenges where you can find ready brief and then create the project based on that. Later on in the video, I'm gonna tell you how to pick the right order for the case study. But before that, let's make sure we make those cards the most clickable as possible. So we've designed in the cards, uh, our preview of our case study. We wanna make sure we're gonna show just enough. If you work on the mobile app, you don't wanna show them 10 screens on just this little preview card. Probably like two to three screens. If it's a website, then we're thinking like two parts. If it's dashboard, probably just one dashboard and maybe a few things on the overlay so it's slightly elevated. If you don't know what to add for your title and subtitles, then the name of the company as a title and the subtitles very briefly. For example, simplifying checkout for Apple website. So it's very, very brief description of what you've done. If you work for a very well-known company like Pinterest, Google, Amazon, eBay, then adding only a logo as your cart will be enough. But for the less recognizable companies, add the screens. So picking the right order for your case study to showcase on the homepage. The first project you want to show is the, your most remarkable project, the, the one that really showing off your design skills and how amazing stuff you can do. The second project is your life project. So they can learn about how you actually approach in the project. What is your actual process, not just for imaginary client. And then the third one is the most relevant for this job. So if you're applying for startup, you want to include other startup project. If you're applying for banking, then you want to include some banking project and so on. Next, I'm going to add the preview of my case studies with little title and description. So what we want to do is we want to upload our own. I'm going to change the order. I think uh, app, website and dashboard that looks much better and slightly adjust the background because here I have exported with really black background. I'm going to use the lighter one. Next, our title and description. So now we have a bit of meaning. We're going to go ahead and create more description about each case study below. So the first one, I have Flexio Enhancing Productivity with AI mobile app. So in the first slide, I would like to give a tiny bit more description what this project is about and then include uh, things like problem, research and impact. We're going to make those slightly smaller and add to one more description text below. And here we're going to include our mockups. For the rest of the presentation, I would use a, a big image and the te text description below describing your process and the stage of the project. Below your project, you want to add a little bit about yourself. You chose design, what is your philosophy, keep it short but real. The last but not least is the contact section. It could be the form, it could be the button to your email, it could be LinkedIn. Make it easy to navigate and easy to contact you. And bonus section, if you have add the testimonials, awards, press releases, this is where they can go. Use Gamma for inspiration, what should be on the next slide. And once you're done, hit the presentation mode or even you can send it as a URL link. And of course, you can export it as PDF, PowerPoint, Google Slide, PNGs and even post directly on your LinkedIn profile. If you have an existing website portfolio but you want to simply convert it into PDF, you can do that as well by choosing the import file. So let's go with the from URL. This is my very, very old portfolio. <laughs> let's see what Gamma gonna come up with. And as you can see, it generated the presentation from the URL I provided, which is actually really impressive that it could pull off all the information I include into a presentation in just seconds. I want to just mention this, that 
there is a difference between portfolio when you're applying for a job and website to create to show off your skills, like the ones you see on awards, Webflow, Framer, like those websites have completely different purpose. If we look at the top of designers in the industry, the ones that work in Google, Meta, all of that, it's very clearly that their portfolio is very simple, that the project is the one that's shining, not the website itself. So let's keep it simple.